developing color, however, the whole new physical problem of very great complexity, the development of the color tube was one of the major achievements of, of electronics in the world's history. Did you work on that color, in the color deal? No, no, but I, was, I worked with all the people who did, but I didn't do the work myself. One, one humorous incident, to show there is some humor even in the hard work we did, was when the color tube was all developed and worked very well. Uh, but it was a mystery to anybody else. No one had ever seen one. Uh, so a demonstration was given to important government officials in Washington. They sat in a room with a color receiver using this magic color tube. In an adjacent room uh, was the camera and a bowl of fruit for the camera to look at to give a picture in the room where the audience was. Well, the picture was turned on and the audience was aghast and very disappointed because the bananas turned out to be blue. And they couldn't adjust it otherwise. All the knobs and all those controls they could vary still resulted in blue bananas. Then Dr. Brown carried in the bowl of fruit from the adjacent room and showed that he had painted the bananas blue. And that ended all apprehension of RCA's color rendition. And in fact, the RCA basic design of color tubes uh, not only became, but still is, the standard used throughout the world. You were aware, though, of the color, the battle for color TV, oh, which yes. was really a massive Absolutely. battle. Absolutely. Fan a fantastic battle uh, involving a great many people and a great many brains uh, and a great deal of collaboration of a type you don't often see between human beings. Uh, it worked out very well, but it was very difficult. Uh, describe for a second what exactly it was. There was an, a CBS system and an NBC, an RCA system, is that correct? That's about what it was, yes. The CBS system uh, devised by a man named Peter Goldmark uh, with the revolving discs uh, we thought was impractical and now it's very obvious that it, that it, that it would have been impractical had it been in, adopted. Uh, but it had a lot of pressure behind it, a lot of CBS and Goldmark pressure uh, and uh, the FCC being rather ignorant about technical matters saw a nice beautiful picture one time to them to them beautiful produced by this complicated mechanical means they decided to make that the standard for the country this made it very very difficult for us to promote and develop and promote our, our electronic system uh, and when the supreme court finally backed up the fcc decision to standardize on the other method then we had the supreme court to fight and that wasn't easy but uh, we did win we had this humorous occasion that I mentioned of the color tube and, and, and the blue beyond it, bananas. Various things happened and we ended up winning lock, stock and barrel. The SEC backed down completely from their original decision. Because RCA produced an all-electronic color television tube. Yeah. To put that in perspective, the color television battle was really one of the most important technological battles and feats of the century, wasn't it? Yes, that's true. It involves great complexities in how to control, how to generate and control the cathode ray beam, uh, how to get the three separate colors in some way, uh, how to have the color appear on the face of the tube in the way of millions of phosphor dots, different colors for different dots, uh, the whole way of how to construct the tube with the extreme precision required, mechanical precision, the, the mechanical part of the problem was a major part of making a color tube. And Sarnoff uh, really mobilized the forces of RCA absolutely. to Absolutely, and, and he would have meetings occasionally uh, down here to make sure that all aspects were being covered. And nothing, nothing forgotten or, or shoved off to one side. That's where his overall systems approach, which I mentioned, was invaluable.